Now, you would think in the age of smartphones, social media, you know, it, it, it's almost impossible for somebody to just vanish. Sadly, Patty and Jennifer know for a fact that anybody can go missing because two years ago, on Patty's birthday, her 18-year-old daughter Desiree left a birthday card on her pillow, walked out of the door, and vanished. And since that day, Patty and Desiree's stepmom Jennifer have spent every waking moment trying to locate this beautiful young teenager. Take a look. My daughter Desiree has been missing for 864 days. The last 864 days have been nothing but pure hell and heartbreak. Uh -huh. The day that Desiree went missing was my birthday. She left a birthday card on her pillow for me. Her and my other daughter had plans. They were going to make a cake and what have you. My other daughter got dropped off. Desiree stayed with the individuals. She had texted my other daughter saying that she was coming home. And that made it home. We tried calling her to go straight to voicemail. I logged onto my phone account and noticed that all phone calls, text messages, everything had stopped the morning before. And that's when I went into panic mode. Never in a million years did I ever think that anything like this would happen. You know, as Desiree's stepmom, uh, when I found out that she was missing, you think that she's just going to come back. You think she's just gone for a few days and then it, it went on. And I watched her mom, you know, start to suffer. And that's been the worst part. Just watching her. And if it's going to take her and I doing it together to bring her home, her child is coming home. One way or the other, this baby is coming home. The last thing I think of when I close my eyes at night is her. The first thing I think of in the morning is her. The not knowing is the worst feeling ever. It's just the worst thing ever. So to help uncover some clues, we enlisted the help of a psychic named Reginald Lewis. And later on, we're going to show you what happened when Reginald had the opportunity to spend some time with Patty and Jennifer. What's, what's in your hand? Oh, the birthday card. This is the card that she had left that morning. Now, you admit that, you know, your daughter, I mean, like a lot of teenagers, fell, fell in with the wrong crowd. She trusted the wrong people. The day your daughter disappeared. Her and my other daughter was hanging out with these people all day. My other daughter came home. She was dropped off? She was dropped off. Desiree stayed and said, I'll be home later because they had plans for my birthday. The last time that any of us had heard from her, she had texted my older daughter saying that she was on her way home. Right. And that's the last that I know that she was seen. And apparently what happened was that she did end up with one of these older guys. And you knew his name, right? Yes. And, and the authorities knew his name. Yes. And subsequently, he and others were arrested for drug dealing, mm -hmm. and they're in federal prison. Yes, and will not talk. And won't talk. <clears throat> will not talk. Jennifer, admittedly, you know, you're the stepmom. She's the mom. And you all, the two of you, weren't too close before this disappearance. No, we were not. No. The this two of you. definitely brought us to, you know, closer together and... We have vowed together that we are not going to give up until she comes home. Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, I've read your story and I've read everything you have done in the last two years. You have left no stone unturned. You have had hired drones. You have hired helicopters. You have had all of your friends out there searching every single weekend. We've done uh, billboards, we've done t-shirts, and this one is for you to take home oh, good. with you, and it has Debbie's picture on it. Yes. Right. And then we have a Facebook page called Bring Desiree Ferris Home, and there's thousands of people on that page just waiting for the day that we get to bring her home. We will do whatever is necessary to find her and bring her home. She was a good girl. I don't want to say was, she is. I mean, she's got a heart of gold. She's beautiful. An she had just laugh. Yeah. Her laugh. She had a laugh that was just contagious. Has the trail gone cold? It has. Yeah, it has. We, but we're not giving up. Um, you, know, you would think if the last guy 
that you know she was with, right, is alive in prison. You know, they talk in prison a lot, don't they? Yeah. So you think somebody in prison knows? Oh, I'm sure. Um, but they're not talking. We're hoping no. they come forward at some point. We're hoping that they, yeah. you know, give something up to make themselves a deal, maybe. We ask you all if, if Patty, uh, you were open to meeting with a psychic, Reginald Lewis, Lewis yes. and you said, yeah. Why, why were you ready to meet with somebody? We will do anything, whatever it takes, and hope, pray and hope that somebody will have the right the answer. Patty, uh, you were open to meeting with a psychic, Reginald Lewis, Lewis. Yes. And you said, yeah. Why, why were you ready to meet with somebody? We will do anything, whatever it takes, and hope, pray and hope that somebody will have the right the answers. So we enlisted the help of Reginald Lewis in hopes that he could use his gifts to gain some insight in Desiree's disappearance. So here's what happened when Patty and Jennifer and Reginald met like 24 hours ago. Hello, pleasure to meet you. My name is Reginald. What's your name? Patty. Patty. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Um, so immediately as I'm connecting right now, the person that's connected to you, ladies, is a female? Yeah. That's missing? Okay. She seems very young. She, I want to say she's in, I want to say probably her teens. I'm feeling like somewhere, I don't know why I keep hearing, like 17, 18. She was 18. I don't know if I'm seeing initial D or I'm hearing the name D. I keep hearing D, 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 D. Desiree. Desiree, okay. And it keeps saying happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. And it keeps showing me birthday balloons in, in the month of February. What's the connection to February? It's her birthday. Desi's birthday is February 11th. I feel like I'm going past like a, a basketball court, like a, a schoolyard or a park or something like that. I feel like that there was a male somewhere between the age of mid-20s, early 30s, either his Hispanic or white, but he has a tan. She was heading to a friend. Okay. With the male that you're talking about? Mm. And he lives by a school with a basketball? I keep seeing uh, handcuffs. So just let me know that this person has a history oh, yeah. of crime. Yeah. I feel this sense of grabbing her. I feel like someone has me. Because she, she's small, she's tiny. I keep seeing like a van or a truck related to this male. I just heard there's a possibility that she's living. There's a connection, living, living. But honestly, it keeps coming up. Trafficking. It's not in the state, it's something out of the state. What about her belongings? A lot of what she may have had, I keep seeing like a fire. When he got kicked out of his house, he uh, caught everything on fire out in the driveway. We couldn't find anything. I feel that she may have been taken out of state. For some reason, Virginia, Virginia, Virginia kept coming through. So I'm gonna leave you with that, but just know, I definitely feel she's, she's alive and there's still hope. Wow. Do you think he helped? A lot of stuff was on spot. Really on spot, yeah. Right. Well, it's time everybody to meet Reginald. Here he is, please welcome. Reginald, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, is it hard for you to get involved in missing in missing cases? Extremely hard. The great thing about this is, unfortunately, with missing persons and cold cases, a lot of the time it has to do with death, and that's why it's so difficult. Fortunately, in their case, you really I felt believe she she's alive. Is really alive, and this can definitely be resolved. So, Patty, I, I want to give you a chance to look straight in that camera. If you know anything. Um, if you have any information, just you know, call the anonymous tip line in Kansas City. You don't have to, you don't have to give them anything. You can just call in and say where she's at. Desiree Ferris went missing on May 1st, 2017, from Liberty, Missouri. If you have any information that will help bring Desiree home, you may call this number, 816-474-8433. Have you been told that you're the Missouri family is marking a sad anniversary. Tomorrow marks three years since Desiree Ferris went missing. She simply disappeared and her family has no answers and no closure. Here's investigative reporter Angie Racono. Desiree was 18 years old. She went missing on her mom's birthday. She texted she was on her way home, but she never showed up. And then her social media accounts went dark and her phone stopped pinging. Three years later, her mom is begging for information and justice. 
people out there know. Um, somebody just doesn't disappear off the face of the earth. I mean, we haven't found nothing of hers. No phone, no purse, no nothing. Um, it's She just vanished. And we all know in reality that doesn't happen. Light your candles. There have been vigils and searches for Desiree Ferris. Three years later, there are no answers for her mom. I feel closer to her down here. If I'm in her room, I just feel like I'm closer to her. So it's just, I don't know. Desiree's bedroom is pretty much the same. Bruno Mars hangs on the wall. She was in love with that man. I took her to her concert when she got her tickets. She just screamed. Posters from vigils have been added and then another and another. I just don't get it. Patty Tam knows some information. None of it is good. Court records named the last people Desiree was in contact with. The teen was hanging out with men older than her. That group of people are just nasty and they're just, they don't want to be called snitches. The trail leads to McDonald's and a house in Kansas City. Social media messages show Desiree wanted to go home. A man said, okay, he'd take her home, but Desiree never made it. For the longest time, I had nightmares that she was screaming for me, and I couldn't find her. I couldn't do nothing. Um, if it is the worst case scenario, she doesn't deserve to be thrown out like a piece of trash. Liberty police have a formal investigation. People have been questioned, but there has never been an arrest. There is no body and no proof a crime took place. Much of the groundwork has been Desiree's own family, especially her stepmother, Jennifer Ferris, who follows the dark leads. We're kind of at a standstill and we're still relying on people to come forward with information on her. She's coming home no matter what, um, good or bad on her own two feet or whether I'm carrying her, she's coming home. Um, that's all I want is I just want her home and then we'll go from there. The family tells me there is a new area they would like to search by foot as soon as the restrictions are lifted. In the meantime, they're asking anyone with information to call the tips hotline. Angie Ricono, KCTV5 News. 1,000 days. That's how long it's been since the family last saw their loved one, Desiree Ferris. The then 18-year-old disappeared in 2017. Only on 41 Action News, reporter Sarah Plake spoke with her family today. And Sarah, there's still something that's giving this family some hope. Yes, they were able to map out all of her pings, her cell phone pings, and they haven't released this information publicly yet. But one of the last places Desiree's phone pinged was off of this tower here behind me. It's off of 43rd and Washington Avenue in Independence. But after this, where she went from there 1,000 years or 1,000 days ago is unknown. I, got <laughs> I just want her home. But as every day that goes by, there's less and less chance that it's gonna have a good outcome. 1,000 days have passed since anyone has heard from Desiree Ferris. She was 18 then, on May 2nd, 2017. I remember it clearly. I remember getting up that morning. I didn't really sink in that anything was wrong until the next night when I looked on my Verizon and seeing that all phone activity, everything stopped that morning of the second. But it's Desiree's phone activity that gives the family hope. We were able to get the pings. Um, you know, I emailed her detective and begged him to let us have the pings. They put the pings on a map. These are some of the last areas Desiree could have been. Her phone pings off a tower at 43rd and Washington Avenue in Independence at 3.14 a.m. on May 2nd. We figure out the distances. We figure out where around those pings somebody could have possibly left her. And we go and search the areas. That's how we do it. The family also got another person's pings and noticed the two phones ping alongside one another until her phone shuts off. That person is outlined in court records as being one of the last to see her alive. We have found nothing of Desi. So what do you do with that? You can't. You have to keep your mind in the mindset that she's still out there. And that's why we keep doing what we do. 
Liberty Police declined our request for an interview, but they said that this investigation has progressed significantly. They said that they've tried to question people who they believe know where Desiree is at, but those people have invoked their right to remain silent, so that means they can't be officially questioned. I'm Sarah Plake, 41 Action News. Metro family starts their own tip line, desperate for information about their missing daughter. This spring will mark three years since Desiree Ferris vanished without a trace. Now, see what stands in the way of finding her in tonight's Fox 4 Crime Files. That's her first birthday. Always been a ham. Patty Tam has waited for answers for nearly three years. That's how long her youngest child, Desiree Ferris, has been missing. Her room is pretty much the same. I mean, besides the big poster boards that we hung up, I mean, it's just her Bruno Mars, her Michael Jackson. Her daughter's last gesture came in the form of a birthday card. That morning I got up for work and I came down here and the light was on. The TV was on, but they were gone. She put a birthday card on her pillow for me. Desiree vanished the early morning hours of May 2nd, 2017. A search warrant filed in the case says witnesses put Desiree with two men the night before she disappeared. Prime suspect, yeah, he was arrested 11 days after Desiree went missing on unrelated charges. So he's been in federal prison since. One of those men is Robert Keegan, now serving 18 years in federal prison on drug charges. We was told at one point that when the prosecutor went to talk to him, he wouldn't tell him anything. He wanted full immunity on anything to do with her disappearance. What does that tell you? Guilty? Yeah. Witnesses told police that just before Desiree disappeared, Keegan gave her a ride to a McDonald's on Van Brunt. Then she got a ride from another man, Mark Arzola. Arzola told investigators that he took her to a house at 81st and Highland in South Kansas City. Her phone last pinged a few miles from there. Two weeks at end, the PD finally got her ping, got a search warrant to, for Verizon to get all of her pings. I don't know how they can tell if it was turned off or if it died, but they said no, it was physically turned off. At first, the case generated national attention, but as the months passed, leads dried up, so the family has started their own tip line. We have a separate tip line. If people don't want to call the, co the one for the PDs, we have a separate tip line. You could call, text, whatever, and it's anonymous. Liberty Police declined our request for an interview, but they released a statement that says there are criminals in federal prison right now who may know what happened to Desiree and that some people interviewed in the case have refused to talk, invoking their Miranda rights. But Patty refuses to give up hope. Until I have proof or until she comes to that door, whether she's on her own two feet or I'm carrying her, then I'll believe whatever happened. You can find out how to submit tips about Desiree's case as well as read the full statement from Liberty Police on fox4kc.com. Now new at six, a cry for help and a metro mystery spanning nearly two years with the family of Desiree Ferris hoping to find answers. This has devastated everybody. Let us bring her home, put it into this nightmare. Well, today is Ferris's 20th birthday. Yeah, one of the last people to see her is facing at least 18 years behind bars tonight. 41 Action News reporter Sarah Plake spoke with her family who they want to talk to him about their daughter. She should be home celebrating her 20th birthday with all of us. And she's not, we don't know where she's at. Desiree Ferris's family says their nightmare should have ended a long time ago. But there's people out there that just don't have a heart. They have no soul. Caught between unwavering hope and devastating reality, they continue to search for Ferris, who's been missing since the early morning hours of May 2nd, 2017, 651 days ago. Desiree's phone last pinged and shut off here near this wooded area around 83rd and Hillcrest. Her family says they wanna get back to the facts and retrace every step. And the facts are, you know, Keegan picked her up from Mark Arzola's house and then he claims he dropped her at 72nd and Troost. What happened to her from then? She just disappeared, so he has to know something more. Robert Jason Keegan was one of the last people to see Ferris alive, according to court records filed by Liberty Police. Same with Mark Arzola. Keegan is one of five people busted in a separate meth and weapons conspiracy days after Ferris disappeared. He's facing 18 years in federal prison. Is he gonna talk after that? Are we going to have any chance? Liberty Police have never named any suspects in Ferris's case. They told us there are inmates in federal prison who may know where she is, but they haven't told investigators. The family feels like her case has taken a back seat, so they go out and search. It's like you have to decipher what 
is true, what is not. You know, it's really hard. It's it's hard to go through those stories. How can they look at themselves every day, knowing what they know, knowing the pain and heartbreak that they're causing a family? She should be home. Keegan's attorney did not respond to our request for information. Sarah Plake, 41 Action News. And anyone who knows what happened to Ferris can submit a tip anonymously to the tips hotline.